normal distribution. At first glance, a random variable is set to be normally distributed when most observations in the data set are expected to fall close to the average. So let's just jump ahead a little bit. Here's the distribution, and what distribution means is that uh, we're looking at all possible values for this underlying variable. So if you're looking at all possible values, in theory, it could go as low as negative infinity and as high as positive infinity. So that's your distribution, all possible values. Now, when you have a large number of values that are possible, uh, what we like to compute is the mean or the average of all those possible values, and that's what we have right there. Now, an axis that is not directly visible in this uh, framework is the vertical axis, and the vertical axis um, records the frequency. In other words, how often do each of these values occur? Now, if it's normally distributed, you can see that the outcome that has the highest frequency or the highest likelihood is the average itself. So that's where we get the hump shape at the top. But then as you move away from the average, as you move away from the average, then these values would have lower likelihood of occurring. And that's true whether you're looking at uh, to the right of the average or to the left of the average. So let's pick this one here. Uh, so what this says is this value is also possible, but it would have a lower probability than occurring than the average. And similarly over here, this value is also possible. It's just that it's not as frequent as the average. Now look what happens as we move further away from the average. So as you move further away from the average, these values are still possible. They could occur, but now they're occurring much less frequently. In other words, they're less probable. And similarly, on the negative side, so if you move further away from the average, uh, this value is possible, but it's just not occurring as often. So when you connect the dots, when you connect these dots, that's when you get that bell shape for normal distribution. So let's go back and uh, continue with our analysis. So furthermore, the closer the outcome is to the average, irrespective of which side uh, of the average you're looking at, the higher will be its probability of occurring. And that's, that's exactly what we're saying here. So if you're looking at a number that's, uh, if you're comparing A, with B, while B is closer to the average, and therefore it's more likely to occur uh, than outcome A. On the other hand, outcomes further away from the average are expected to occur less frequently, and we talked about that. As a result, uh, normal distribution will be bell-shaped, uh, reflecting the higher probability of those values that are closer to the average. And it will be symmetric, uh, reflecting the fact that the dispersion from the average is independent of its algebraic sign. And I demonstrated this before too, right, ladies and gentlemen? So suppose uh, we're looking at this distance and uh, this distance here. And what that means is, is that these distances are equal. And uh, so if that's A and that's B, let's call this uh, C. And you can see that uh, both A and B are equally uh, distanced away from the mean, just they happen to, one happens to be above the mean, one happens to be below the mean. It doesn't matter because they both will have the same frequency. So that's where the sym sym symmetry comes in from, because uh, we're saying it doesn't matter which side of the mean you're at, uh, your probability will be the same. Therefore, uh, when we plot the outcomes and their corresponding probabilities of a normally distributed data, we get this bell shape that we're talking about. And again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know usually uh, we just see the um, horizontal axes, but always be mindful that there really is a vertical axis as well, which measures the frequency. In other words, uh, the likelihood of each of these values occurring. There it is, the height of the curve at any point indicates the frequency of occurrence for that particular value. Note again, at how the average is expected to occur the most number of times, and thus represents the peak of the bell shape. And furthermore, the area under the curve between any two points represents the probability of an outcome falling within that range. So what does that mean? Okay. So 
area is associated with probability. So since since uh, this distribution runs from negative infinity to positive infinity, under this area, it would represent 100% of all possible outcomes, right? Because you're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. That covers everything. So then what we could do is uh, to calculate the probability of a set of events. So for example, let's just say we want to know the probability from uh, these between these two points, then we just have to find the area uh, of this point. So if we find the area of the shaded part, that tells us the probability that the outcome will fall within this range. Now, of course, we have a lot of examples following uh, that'll show you how to compute this, but for now, we just need to lay the groundwork. So more formally, a random variable would exhibit uh, the following uh, characteristics in order to be considered normally distributed. So first of all, the outcomes range from negative infinity to positive infinity, as we've seen here, right? Uh, two, the distribution is symmetric, meaning that there is no skew, uh, or alternatively, the skewness metric would be equal to zero. Uh, symmetry would also imply that the mean, median, and mode would all be equal. So this point here uh, would represent the mean, the median, and the mode. And this is something we've covered in a previous module. Consequently, there's a 50% probability that an outcome will be below the average and an equal chance that it will be above the average. Remember, we're talking about the uh, probability as being equal to the area under the curve. So since it's symmetric, uh, this half will have the same area as that half. So therefore, this half has the same probability as that half. And the third characteristic of a normally distributed random variable is that its kurtosis will equal to 3, and therefore excess kurtosis, which is just kurtosis minus 3, would equal to 0. Now, as a result of these characteristics, a normally distributed uh, variable may be completely described by its expected value and variance. And here's what it means, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what it means. This is kind of important. Well, everything's important, right? Here we go. So if a random variable is normally distributed, you don't have to tell me about all the possible outcomes. You don't. You don't have to tell me all the possible values. All you need to tell me is the mean and the standard deviation. Because if you tell me just these two variables, I can reconstruct the entire distribution. In other words, just using these two uh, inputs, I can tell you what the probability is of observing all these uh, different outcomes. And that's the beauty with normal distribution, is that uh, it just summarizes the data uh, and just makes it so much easier. And again, as I demonstrated, rather than having to look at each individual value, all we need to work with is the mean and standard deviation.